got an opportunity to catch up with Alex Dowsett, who actually doesn't need much of an introduction. You've been around this pro peloton for a long time. <laughs> I think I'm just starting my 10th year. Our record holder, been with a number of pro teams over the years and accomplished many things. Yeah. And we've never met, not until about no, two or three minutes ago. Thought we'd just sort of find out a little bit about how life is after a decade as a pro bike rider and um, what else you do. Maybe we can talk about your charity and a few other things along the way. Let's start with uh, 2020, new team. Yes. Feeling uh, optimistic, buoyant, and all the things that come in January? Yeah, yeah. Um, January is more anticipation, uh, quite nervous. This winter I've worked exceptionally hard. Um, although everyone seems to say, you look like you had an awesome holiday. I think my social media would imply that I was on holiday the whole time, but I was, I was working very hard. Um, and you come here and you're like, I know that I'm in good shape, but how good is everyone else? Mm. And so you, you kind of you're just waiting for like that first stage. You're looking around. It's like who's suffering? Are you suffering? I, am I? How am I compared to everyone else? And and our end of like stage two right now is so far so good. I, I think I'm in a good, like, a very good place actually. I haven't spent any time with anyone from the Israel startup nation, so it's sort of, we've read what we've read in the media, yeah. and I just wonder if you can give us an insider's perspective on how it looks, you know, um, and how it feels, and how it came about. How it came about is a, is a minefield. We'll start with that, I guess. I mean, Katusha's final year was a nightmare. Um, Never felt so vulnerable as a bike rider as I did then because we I had a two-year contract. So I right now I'm in the second year of my two-year contract. And we were basically told that... Uh, we were told at the Tour de France that... We knew the team was in trouble, but they told us at the start of the Tour that there would be news on the first rest day of the Tour. First rest day of the Tour comes round, uh, we have no news, and then that was the trend all the way through to uh, tour, end of the Tour of Britain. And we, we couldn't go looking either. Us riders that had contracts, they said, you have to respect your contracts and um, they were not going to release you from them to go anywhere else. So it just kind of stuck. Like, we'd talk to other teams and uh, it'd be like, is there room for, and my manager would be like, is there, you, is there interest in Alex Dowsett? And some would say no, some would say yes. Is he available? And the response from us is, we don't know. Um, currently, no, but when we know something, maybe. And then when you get to the end of September, like, teams are full. And it's, it's not even a case of, is there interest? It's like, we, we have no space. We're at our limit, right. whether that be financially or like physically. Um, We'd love to have you, but we can't. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like going for a job interview and saying the space has been filled. Um so we then, end of the tour of Britain was told that we're merging with Israel. Um, it was a little bit vague for a while as to what was then happening. And then after Worlds, it was, it was like, no, no, you're, you're, you're there. There's no other option. Like some riders were, were paid out. Um, and some riders were given the option to, to leave if they wanted to. Um, and not just right like staff as well it was just when two teams come together it's always messy I think there's always going to be people that get like, shafted um, but you can't have two teams worth of staff and riders on, on one team so um, there was a place where I had a contract so there's a place for me um, and I think my result at World Championships made the team very um, encouraged to have me can you remind me? I'm sorry, I don't As know. As fifth. Okay. Yeah, in the yeah. TT. And yeah. uh, Nat's hair off of third. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah um, Would have been nice at home. Yes, no, it was, it, was, no it, was, it was a great day. It was just under a whole cloud of stress, mm. team-wise. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then, yeah, so sat down with Chell Karlstrom, who runs it, and he told me what was going to happen, like, team-wise, and it all sounded good. I told him what I wanted from 2020, which is basically the Olympics, mm -hmm. and it was something that he supported, and, yeah, we got the ball rolling. Yeah, that's brought us to now. And so far, the impressions from it are, it's very good. It's very good. I mean... There's an aspect that where I could happily say like it, it would have been quite something to have been worse than uh, what we had last year. But um, I think Katusha was just struggling. We were, we were on the back foot, we were fighting. It was far bigger problems than just winning bike races. So, you know, your, your lead sprinter retires mid-season after winning like, next to nothing. Um, and so all your hopes ride on Zacharin, basically for a result and 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 Pollitt and we're you know you got other teams that can field sort of five got five guys that can win races. We're just really struggling. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, in fact, it's like factor bikes. It's like, uh, yeah, they're good. As far as I know, I, I've known Canyon for seven years. I don't know any different. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never heard bad things about factor bikes. So Shimano, which um, I haven't ridden Shimano since 2012. I've been on Campag and Shram. Mm -hmm. And it certainly is a step up from, uh, from Shram. Um, I believe, anyway. But the, the big thing for me was they said if something isn't good enough, if, a, if an element of our equipment isn't good enough, we will, Im we will improve it or we will replace it with something else. Because they know they took, this is how modern day pro cycling is, is how you win races. Um, and you need, you need to be optimized in every aspect of the athlete. So, and that, a lot of that comes down to equipment. Um, yeah, like you see Ineos, we've got Shimano as a sponsor and they run lightweights in the tour. Like that's that's what we're looking at nowadays to, to win races. Um, yeah, and uh, Israel Startup Nation have that, which is good. Um, professional coaching setup, uh, just everything seems thick. And uh, considering the team was so late, everything was terribly well organised as well. Um, there's more staff. It's just more resources, and yeah, I, I've got nothing I, I had to say about it so far, which is awesome. Oh, Alex is a uh, super professional for sure, there's no question about that. He has done a lot of good uh, TTs in the past and uh, some nice breakaways, and that's exactly what we are expecting from him also now. And uh, the other thing that is good with Alex is that he has a lot of experience. So he knows what to do for a teammate and when to do that. The other thing with uh, Alex is that he can uh, cheer up the, uh, the mood. Yeah. And uh, all these qualities are very good, very important for a team. Yeah, I mean, from the outside, a lot of teams look like, look, look slick, look perfect. And from the inside, it's, it's chaotic. It's a mess. Um, you, I've had on teams where I will receive a boarding pass through the email for a flight the next day for a race I just didn't even know was on the team's calendar, let alone mine. Like that 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 wow. stuff happens. Um, <laughs> It doesn't happen in all teams, but some teams it does, and that's yeah, that's what we're working with at times. Um, and yeah, every every rider will have his, his gripes within a team, but the teams that win are the ones where there's the least amount of gripes, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, Ineos and Jumbo Visma are the ones leading the way, and you just hear about what goes on from inside the team, and that's like. You can see, I mean, people are quite cynical mm -hmm. about the success of, of these teams sometimes. And you just when you hear about what they're doing, it's real simple sometimes. It's really, it's that old school thinking, sort of getting rid of it or questioning it. And 
like for me for the tour last year there was this sort of this old school mentality you have to do a certain amount of races to then do the Tour de France and I'd broken my thumb in UAE and then got a concussion in Romandy so I was out for like two or three months but I was training really hard but you can train with a broken thumb it's a piece of cake um, a concussion knocks you out for a bit but I excuse the pun um, uh, but I was back on it quick I, I was fit and then the team threw me into Dauphiné which is categorically the hardest week on the calendar and then straight from Dauphiné into ZLM Tour nobody in the Tour de France did that programme except for me and I started the tour on my hands and knees and it was but it was like if you don't do these races you're not going to go because like we think you have to do this amount of race days to then start the Tour de France and I I was ready without doing all that and you look at Jumbo Visma they did only ZLM Tour which is on paper a low level race um, which is frustrating um, but yeah that was then and this is 2020 so it's sort of drawn a line under it moved on and and on to pastures new uh, but considering all of that is there still enjoyment from it or is it really much like a job I think the the element of fun there is like a stage two fun yeah, I enjoy um, it, 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 it's like you roll back when I was a kid did I grow up wanting to be a cyclist no, no. I wanted to be a race car driver like my dad um, but what I also wanted to be was very good at something and I tried lots of different things until I found something I was very good at which was cycling and then I enjoy being very good at cycling and then in turn I enjoy cycling so if I go out training and I nail a session and I go above what if my coach says do I don't know, five minute efforts between 400 and 450 and I do them all at 448 then I come home delighted tired but delighted that like, things are moving forward I like the progression I like the aiming for a goal I like just trying to improve my fitness and be better than I was last year um, and I like winning races it doesn't happen often but I do enjoy it um, but I like being part of a winning team as well I mean the biggest buzz I got out of last year was the team time trial in the Tour de France because we ran fifth we punched well above our weight all things considered and without blowing my own no I will blow my own trumpet like, I was instrumental in that because I did the bike fit for three riders in the team two days before um, like we don't do aero testing or anything we didn't do aero testing anything like that it was riders were given their TT bikes and set them up themselves and we're just we're rotating I'm just looking at them like oh let's just say like lift it five cent lift the bars four centimetres widen your armrests and I think Rick Zabel was like this is amazing I've never felt so good on a TT bike and we rode exceptionally well um, and I enjoyed that sort of thing as well um, so just success I guess I mean, a big thing. I don't when I when I finish racing, I don't know whether I'll continue riding a bike for pleasure. It'll probably just be cafe rides. I ride to a cafe, I ride back. I'm not sure if I could handle just going out to do a ride to my front door.